The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of us may remember August 15th, 1981, as the day when Mother Angelica launched the Eternal Word television network, making it the first Catholic satellite network in the United States. About that same time, God inspired my family to start a TV production company that enabled priests to create and distribute Catholic programs using audio and video cassettes, in addition to internet websites and social media platforms a decade later. One of those programs was called A Journey from the Head to the Heart. It featured a conventional Franciscan friar a hermit retreat master for 20 years, who taught people how to deepen their relationship with God by moving from a head or mental relationship to the heart or personal relationship with God. In today's gospel, Jesus offers us a remarkable insight about this relationship as he dispels the notion that the wise and powerful voices of the world have an advantage over the rest of us when it comes to know God who is revealed through the incarnation of his Son, Jesus Christ. It is a deeply personal relationship that finds rich soil in the heart, where meekness and humility reside. From this vantage point, we can interpret little ones, not as a youngster who is simplistic or lacking life skills or easily led, but rather as someone who accepts Jesus with complete trust and full commitment to follow him, no matter the cost. In today's gospel, Jesus compares two types of people. The first type operates from their head, understanding God through the lens of Mosaic law, and who are quick to reject anything that doesn't fit their worldview. The second type operates from the heart, as we hear Jesus praise his Father for revealing things that have eternal worth to the poor, the outcasts, the sinners who hear and accept the gospel, and who allow God's love to fill their heart with the reality of Jesus Christ. Perhaps another way to help us understand how divided these two groups are from one another is expressed in a story that is told about St. Francis of Assisi, who is universally known for his love of animals, in addition to his compassion for the poor. As a youngster, Francis grew up in a wealthy merchant family, and lived his teenage years characterized by status, pride, and sin. His conversion was a moment of God's grace that occurred when Francis wandered into a dilapidated church called San Damiano. As Francis knelt beneath the crucifix and looked at the eyes of Jesus, he asked God to show him his purpose in life. We might recognize this type of prayer as a precious God moment of the heart when Francis had a vision of God telling him to go and rebuild his church. Responding to this vision in human terms, Francis began to restore San Damiano and other rundown churches near Assisi. Then, in another vision, Francis finally understood that God was telling him to repair his church that was falling into ruins in the sense of an ineffective institution and religion. In his response, Francis became one of the little ones described in today's gospel. As he decided to trust God no matter what, Francis gave away his possessions, embraced the poor, the sick, the lepers, and lived the gospel from the heart. He began to preach God's word and sharing God's love with mercy 
Trusting God's grace to guide him, Francis understood the sanctity of all creation and that all people and animals were part of God's plan. In the year 1230, the great basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, Italy, was completed. It was a magnificent basilica that spared no expense in all that it contained. Yet for those who viewed this magnificent church from the heart, the question remained, did this basilica correctly represent what God asked Francis to rebuild? Now to help us answer this question from the vantage point of the head and the heart, I'd like to share a story about a young Franciscan friar named Brother Timothy, who was the first sacristan in the basilica. He took great pride in his role as caretaker of the sanctuary. Each morning, Brother Timothy polished the candlesticks and carefully ironed the altar cloth that was lined with fine silver ringlets. One day, Brother Timothy asked a fellow friar, Brother Juniper, to watch over the sanctuary while Brother Timothy took a lunch break in the friary. Brother Juniper graciously accepted the task. A short time later, as Brother Timothy was sipping his bowl of soup, he thought to himself, how foolish am I to entrust the treasures of the church to Brother Juniper's hands. I must go back at once and return to the sanctuary. Meanwhile, Brother Juniper was greeting the many pilgrims who were visiting the basilica when a rag-torn woman approached the altar and begged Brother Juniper for arms. Being a Franciscan friar who lived the vow of poverty, Brother Juniper wanted to help the woman, but he had no money to give her. So instead, he decided to take a scissor and cut the dozen silver ringlets from the altar cloth. Brother Juniper placed those ringlets into her hand and praised God for sending her into the basilica that he might do a charitable act. By the time Brother Timothy returned, the beggar was long gone. And when Brother Timothy saw what Brother Juniper did, he became infuriated and went searching for the beggar woman, having no success. When Brother Timothy returned, his rage drove him to complain to Father John, the minister general of the fiery, over Brother Juniper's careless actions. Father John called Brother Juniper into his office, asking each side to present his case. After their testimony, Father John calmly said, Brother Timothy, you left Brother Juniper in charge of the church. We all know his way. In fact, I'm surprised that he did not give away the entire altar cloth along with the candlesticks. Brother Timothy nodded in agreement. Then turning to Brother Juniper, Father John lost his temper and shouted until his voice went hoarse. Brother Juniper quietly accepted the scolding, as he now had a newfound concern over Father John's hoarse voice. Later that evening, Brother Juniper decided to soothe Father John's voice by preparing a large pot of porridge with a large pat of butter on top. Then with bowl in one hand and candlestick in the other, Brother Juniper made his way to Father John's room. When he awoke the minister general, he explained his concern over Father John's hoarse voice due to his foolishness, as Father John became even more irate and refused to eat the porridge. Brother Juniper begged and pleaded, but Father John stubbornly refused to eat. Well, said Brother Juniper, then might you hold the candlestick while I eat the porridge while it's still warm? Hearing those words, Father John had a change of heart as he finally understood the simplicity and charity of Brother Juniper. Father John said, well, perhaps we can both share this porridge together so that you will not have to eat it all alone. And with that, they laughed and talked, enjoying each other's company and praising God for their reconciliation. My brothers and sisters, when we think about the actions of Brother Timothy, Brother Juniper, and Father John, it's a fair question to ask. What character might we identify with in this story? Or what might have we felt or said if we were faced with a similar responsibility or presented with someone who asked for an act of charity? It's a genuine question for our reflection in light of today's gospel. We might even ask this question in a slightly different way. What is it that Jesus sees in these little ones? that he considers essential in terms of growing in knowledge and relationship with God the Father. And so today, as the world around us often mocks the Catholic Church, humiliates the cross, trivializes the Holy Eucharist as a mere cookie, and dismisses God's word as being out of touch with the misconduct of today's culture, take courage. Strive to motivate our faith from the head to the heart. 
because we are counted among the little ones who know and love the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ.